Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about single slit diffraction, which is similar to my other video on Young's double slit experiment, but this is going to be talking specifically about the single slit, not the double slit. So the first thing I want to show you is what this experiment looks like. First of all, we have like a tiny slit right there of width, I'll call it A. Different people call it different things, I like to call it A. And light is coming in towards that slit, and when it passes through it, well, let me erase this for a second, the light actually diffracts. And what diffracts basically means is that it changes shape. It changes shape from a plane, like vertical lines here, to this kind of semicircular shape. And along with this diffraction comes interference patterns, which can be detected on a back wall if I have them. And so I'm not going to explain exactly how or why this happens. All I'm going to say is what's important for you to know for the equations and for the test, which is the fact that you get these bright fringes of light that look something like this. And another representation you commonly see is this kind of waveform that looks like this, where all the peaks are where the bright fringes are, and all the valleys are where the dark fringes are. And the middle one is always the highest, and it's getting smaller and smaller as it goes on. The reason why this is important is because this is the number of bright fringes that we're looking at. Now, don't write this down, but in our double slit experiment, we would have said this is m equals 0, here's m equals 1, here's m equals 2. Same thing on the other side, m equals 1, m equals 2. The reason why I'm telling you not to write this down is because as far as the equations go for single slit diffraction, you actually count the dark fringes for some reason. That means this point right here and this point right here is actually the first one. And for that reason, I usually don't call it M, I like to call it P. So this is P equals one, then over here is P equals two, and same thing on the other side. And what I like to say P is, it's the number of dark fringes that you are away from the central bright fringe. And that's how we count for this equation, which I will now write down. The equation for single slit diffraction is A sine theta equals P times lambda. We already said A is the slit width right here. Sine theta is the angle to that P value. So for instance, maybe it's the angle from here to here. Maybe that's theta if I want the first dark fringe, for instance. And then finally, lambda is the wavelength, which can also be found using the equation C equals lambda times F where c is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the eighth, and f is the frequency measured in hertz. And then the only other equation you really need is we can actually find the width of this central bright fringe, and that width, usually called w, is equal to lambda l over a, where the only variable we don't know is l, and l is the distance to the back wall right there. So that's all the equations we need to know for single slit diffraction. So now let's look at an example problem where we actually use it to solve. Okay, and here's the problem. A single slit diffraction experiment has a first order dark fringe that is two degrees from the central bright fringe. Light with wavelength 650 nanometers was used in this experiment and the back screen is located 20 meters behind the slit. Part A, find the slit width, and then part B, find the width of the central bright fringe. So we'll start with part A. They want to find the slit width. Of course, we're going to use the main equation here for single slit diffraction, which is A sine theta equals P lambda. As it turns out, they basically gave us all the information we need. This is a very easy problem. It's going to be A times the sine of, it was two degrees from the central bright fringe, and that's what theta always is, the angle from the central bright fringe, equals P, which is the first dark fringe, that's what it says right here, first order dark fringe, which simply means that P is one, and then lambda, it said that that was 650 nanometers. Now you do have to be careful, because if it's nanometers, you do have to convert that to meters, 
but all that means is it's times 10 to the minus 9th. Nanometers is always 10 to the minus 9th. So then if I want to solve for A, I'm simply dividing both sides by the sine of 2 degrees. Got to make sure my calculator is in degrees. And that will get me an answer of 1.86 times 10 to the minus 5th, and that's meters, which is a very small distance. As a matter of fact, it's 18.6 micrometers. And in case you're curious how I got that, all I had to do was 1.86 times 10 to the minus fifth meters times the conversion factor, one meter in 10 to the sixth micrometers. And that's how I got 18.6. Now, frankly, I don't care which answer you put. They are both correct. I guess it depends on what your teacher likes, but that's gonna be the answer for part A. And then finally for part B, where we want the central right fringe width, that equation is W equals lambda L over A, where once again I have all the numbers here, especially now that I just found A. Lambda is still 650 times 10 to the minus 9th. L is the 20 because it's 20 meters away from the back wall. And A, use the distance in meters, the first answer we got, 1.86 times 10 to the minus 5th. Very important that we use that number. And if we plug this in a calculator, you're going to get an answer of about 0.70 meters, or if you prefer centimeters, just times it by 100, you get 70 centimeters. And again, both of these answers are correct. And so that's all I wanted to look at for today. If you want to see double slit experiment, I have a different video on that. Or if you want to see diffraction grading, which is another similar topic, you can check out that video as well. I'll put those as links in the description. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.